In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to recover writable app volumes in case of a failure or disaster. In this demonstration, I'm going to use async DR replication. In my lab environment, I've prepared two sites, one called London and one called Amsterdam, which is the disaster recovery location. I've created a container called writable app vol on both sides and I need to create a protection domain that will take care of the synchronization. So let's log on to the London site using Prism Element. So I'm logged on to the London site. I'm going to the storage tab to show that I've created a storage container for the app volumes. And also on the Amsterdam site, I've created the same storage container with the same name. Now let's show the app volumes manager in the London side that I don't have a writable app volume at the moment. And also in the Amsterdam location, there are no writable app volumes at the moment. So the first step is to create a writable volume for myself. So I'm going to select the storage location that I created earlier. I'm going to select a template using the user installed apps plus my profile. And I'm going to create immediately. So the writable volume has been created for myself. I'm going to log on to the London site. And I'm going to log on to the Windows 10 London desktop pool. That is going to give me a non-persistent desktop with a writable volume attached to it that will capture all the installations and also the changes that I make to my profile. So as you can see in the App Volumes Manager, if I refresh, then I can see that my writable volume is attached. Now let's install a couple of applications in my non-persistent desktop in London. So just like a normal user would do, I'm going to start a browser, I'm going to download Google Chrome and just open the executable and install it using next next finish. So Chrome is installed, I also want to install FileZilla, I'm going to download the executable again and install next next finish and I'll also add a desktop icon so I can see that it's installed and also create a document on my desktop because when I selected a template for my writable volume I've selected the user installed applications plus profile template so anything I create and save in my profile will be stored on my writable volume as well. So type in some ran random text, then save it on my desktop so it will be there when I do a fill over to the other location. So sign out from this desktop. Now let me first show you that when I log on to the Amsterdam site to a non-persistent desktop in the desktop pool called Windows 10 Amsterdam, just to quickly show that the applications I just installed in the London site are not available in the Amsterdam site. As you can see, a clean desktop, non-persistent with just the office Suite and Acrobat Reader installed. So sign out from this desktop 
And the next step is to set up the replication between the two sides. Now because Nutanix is virtual machine oriented, you cannot just create a protection domain on a container that doesn't have any virtual machines on it. So we have to use the command line to create a protection domain. Now I'm logged on to a controller VM on the London side and I'm using NCLI to create this protection domain on the storage container. So the command is vstore protect name is and then the name of the storage container that you want to protect. And as you can see it is now protected. Now this name is the name of the protection domain that you can see in prism element. So let's take a look in prism element in the London side and there you can see that the protection domain is created. We can now use prism element to create the schedule for replication. So new schedule I want to repeat every hour and uh, for this demonstration I'm selecting the remote site and keep only the last snapshot. And the start time is 10 past 4. Create schedule. So now that the schedule is created we can see on the Amsterdam site that the async PR protection domain is also created there and the mode is inactive. So the first snapshot has been replicated to this Amsterdam site. So we're now going to assume that there is a failure in the London site, there is a disaster, so we have to fill over to the Amsterdam site. So the command to do that is protection domain, activate, name, and then the name of the protection domain. So I'm logged on to the controller VM in the Amsterdam location using NCLI again. And using this command will activate this storage container in the Amsterdam location. Now we have to wait until the command is processed. Here you can see that there is a new task completed. And it's become active as you can see here. Active. So the next step will that we have to import the writable volumes in, app in the app volumes manager in Amsterdam. So we choose the storage location that just became active. The path is case sensitive, so import. And I want to import the volumes immediately. So as you can see that my writable volume has been imported in the App Volumes Manager and when I log on to the Amsterdam desktop pool I will be able to see my restored applications and my document on my desktop that I created earlier. As you can see my FileZilla client has been installed again, my Google Chrome is there and also my file that I saved on the desktop is present. So what I've showed here today is that if you use VMware writable app volumes and you use Nutanix replication that you can quickly recover from a disaster. Thank you for watching.